Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Miss Sylvia, I'm a children's instructor with the Howard County Library System. And I'm Miss Heidi, I'm also at Miller Branch of the Howard County Library System. And we are so excited to welcome you to our class today, Dr. King's Dream, the celebration of the March on Washington through today. And we're excited to talk about the historic March on Washington, which took place August 28th, 1963. And this will be the 57th anniversary of the March on Washington, such a historical event. It was huge historic event, Miss Sylvia. Even today, it's one of the most famous historical events in American history. Over 250,000 people gathered there today, and we're going to spend some time talking about it. But first, you might wonder what they were marching for and what civil rights are. And so I just have a very brief definition for you, and I got it from this book, The Story of Civil Rights, and this is by Will Mara. And so briefly, very briefly, civil rights are laws that a government makes to protect its people. These laws make sure people are treated fairly and with respect. These civil rights help you live without fear. But for a long time, sadly, boys and girls, the African Americans in our country were not treated with any civil rights. And we have something that will show you a little bit of history of what the African Americans went through when they first came over to this country. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. And when I do that, uh, Miss Heidi and I are going to disappear for part of this part of the presentation. Um, but you will still hear our voices. So do not fret. I'm going to stop the video and start our slide now. loading here we go so our class is dr king's dream the march on washington through today let me see a photo of dr king there so we did a lot of research for this class so here are all of our sources there's a bunch of books as well as websites and we will reference those websites specifically later on so when the F, in the beginning uh, there was slavery that took place in america African Americans came over to the United States as enslaved people, which means they were forced over to this country and forced to work for free without pay. Um, and that took place in about in beginning in the 1600s. So this photo here on the left at the top says United States slave trade. And this came from the National Museum of American History. It shows how African Americans when they were brought over to this country were sold to enslavers um, who purchased them. Now in 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed. And a very important line from the Declaration of Independence is all men are created equal. However, slavery was still taking place during this time. So that was not true for African Americans. They were still enslaved in 1776. The Civil War was a war between the North and the South in the United States. It lasted from 1861 to 1865. One of the causes of the Civil War was the issue of slavery. In 1863, President Lincoln's Emancip Emancipation Proclamation went into effect, in effect, which was part of the ending of slavery. Miss Sylvia, I just yes. wanted to point out, 1776 is when the Declaration of Independence was written all men are created equal. But look at when President Lincoln wrote his Emancipation Proclamation. It's almost 100 years later, not almost. quite 100 years, but it still took that long for us to realize that no one should be slaves. And this is something that President Lincoln said in that Emancipation Proclamation. He declared that as of the first day of the new year, which would have been 1963, all enslaved people would be thenceforth and forever free. Yeah. So almost 100 years after the Declaration of Independence, those who were enslaved were given their freedom on paper. Uh, in 1865 through 1870, there were very important amendments that were adopted, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, another photograph I just wanted to draw attention to is the one on the right here, which shows enslaved women and children that were working in 
uh, cotton fields. And that came from the National Museum of African American History and Culture. So the period after the Civil War is referred to as Reconstruction. It took place from 1865 to 1877. And here's where we talk more about the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. The 13th Amendment abolished slavery. So here is a photograph of a print of the 13th Amendment here in the first photo. The 14th Amendment gave equal protection of the laws to all citizens. So that was supposed to give African Americans equal rights in our country. The 15th Amendment gave the right to vote to African American males. Now, during this time, no females were voting, so that's why it was just for African American males who were able to vote. The other photograph we have here is of a 19th century ballot box, so you can see what it looked like when people went to vote during that time period. And Ms. Sylvia, I just want to point out that the word reconstruction meant they really had to just rebuild many places in the Civil War that wanted slavery. So once slavery ended with the 13th Amendment, they had to reconstruct those places. And that's why there's the term for history, reconstruction. Right. They wanted the North and the South to come together again as one country. So that was part of that period too. Thank you, Ms. Heidi. So following Reconstruction, we moved into what's called the Jim Crow era, which took place from 1877 all the way through 1968. Jim Crow were laws that separated people of color from whites in schools, housing, jobs, and public gathering places. So basically, everything was separate but equal. There was a ruling, Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896, that made it constitutional for segregation to take place. So you can see here, look at these pictures, Ms. Heidi, of a colored school and a white school in the same city and town. And you can see the difference between the colored school. Colored was how African Americans were referred to during this time period um, and versus the white school. Here, they're both in Paxville, South Carolina. They look does, different, but not equal. That does not equal, that's right. That does not look equal to me at all. Right. So there were laws in different states and federally that had separate but equal as part of their language. So here's some more pictures here. We have a sign that says four white passengers. Another one says colored served in rear. And that shows that there's different areas for people to sit on buses or railroads. Take a look at this water fountain, Miss Heidi. What do you see here? Oh, I see the separation of whites versus colored people. And they do not look like equal water fountains even. The colored water fountain is so much smaller than the white water fountain. That's terrible. Yeah, so the facilities were not equal. They weren't given the same amount of resources in African American communities compared to white communities. Uh, this also was true for housing. There were places that only would allow white people to live there. This picture here down at the bottom says exclusive and restricted, which meant that African Americans were not able to live in this development during that time. So that the Jim Crow looked like during this time period. During Jim Crow in 1909, the NAACP was founded, and that stands for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. This organization is so important in civil rights for African Americans still today. Uh, it's the largest, it's most recognized, they do so much advocacy for uh, equal opportunities and civil rights and voting for African Americans in our country. And they honestly help with civil rights for all groups of people. But it was founded in 1909 specifically to help African Americans gain equal rights during the time period. That's amazing. And that's over 100 years old now too, Ms. Sylvia. That's right. So we're getting closer to the big event separate is not equal. This is our fight for civil rights. So in 1954, there was a Supreme Court decision, Brown versus Board of Ed, that overturned that Plessy versus Ferguson decision for separate but equal. It was determined that separate is not equal. 
And so you see the newspaper article here that said segregation in public schools is ruled out, no longer allowed. So that was 1954. Shortly after, Rosa Parks, who many of you may be familiar with, she refused to give up her bus seat. And that was the beginning of the bus boycotts where people, uh, African-American people were refusing to ride the bus and they would walk everywhere they needed to, to prove the point that they should be able to sit wherever they wanted to on the bus. Uh, in 1957, President Eisenhower signed the Civil Rights Act of 1957. And during this period, Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas was integrated. And you can see their high school students in the photograph right above um, this timeline arrow. They had to be escorted to school by the National Guard for their safety because there were plenty of people that were unhappy that schools were being integrated. Above this, there's a picture of people who are picketing against integration. That meant they did not want blacks and whites to be together in the same schools, same restaurants, anywhere. They wanted segregation. So you could see how there were people protesting. They did not want equal rights for everyone. Here in the final picture is a photo of Ruby Bridges, who you may also be familiar with. Ruby Bridges was the first African American to integrate an elementary school in the South. She was only six years old, and that took place in 1960. She also had you to believe, be escorted. Yep. Ms. Sylvia, um, going into school today, I know we're virtual right now, but think of all the friends that these boys and girls have and how many people are of different colored skin than they are. Could you imagine if they weren't allowed to sit together or they had to be escorted into a building because too many people hated that they were there. It's so sad it that so even sad. in 1954, when the law was abolished, uh, integration was declared unconstitutional and it still took three, four years and even into today where people are still not welcoming that African Americans and white people can be together. Yeah, and Ruby Bridges is still alive today um, she's in her mid 60s and she still does a lot of civil rights work around the country, sharing her experience to fight for maintaining civil rights for everyone in our country. So she's still mm. an important player in the civil rights movement. Okay. Some other things that took place leading up to our big march on Washington in 1960. The Greensboro sit-ins were organized by four black college students. They took place at a place called Woolworth. They had a lunch counter and the four students here would sit in the white section and the servers there refused to serve them. However, the college students would not get up until they were given fair treatment at the Woolworth counter. And this photograph is of the actual, some of the actual stools that were in that lunch counter space. Um, and you could, if you visit the National Museum um, of African American History and Culture, you could see them there. Uh, in 1961, there were freedom rides taking place. There were black rioters that were trying to use the whites only areas at bus stations. Unfortunately, this was met with a lot of violence because there were a lot of uh, people who were unhappy that uh, black riders were trying to use the whites only areas. So some of those freedom riders were hurt in the process, but they knew that what they were working for was so important. And then finally, the March on Washington in 1962, that's when the planning for this big event started to take place. And the planning was done by A. Philip Randolph and Bayard Rustin. Started planning Look at that. 63 March on Washington. Look at that picture, Ms. Sylvia, the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. What what color hands are there? That's a white hand and a black hand and join yeah. together because that is what Martin Luther King was going to march for. That's right. So we so wanted to take some time to talk about Martin Luther King Jr. just a little bit because he was the main speaker on that day. August 28th, 1963. And I know Miss Sylvia is going to come back too. 
but yeah. I got my information on Martin Luther King from this biography, Martin Luther King, The Peaceful Warrior. And I love that title, Miss Sylvia, because he was all about peaceful justice. Everything that he did and all the marches and all the protests, there were never any violence from his end. They were always calm and remained in control, no matter what was being done to them. And he went to jail many, many times. But here's a brief biography of what he did. He devoted his life to helping people, first as a Baptist minister and scholar, and later as the foremost leader of the African-American civil rights movement. Dr. King is known for choosing nonviolent civil disobedience as the keystone of his lifelong fight for equality. So I hope you take some time to read all about Dr. Martin Luther King. But on this day, it took a year of planning, as Ms. Sylvia said, to bring us to August 28, 1963. And we have a couple of clips that will show you um, actual video from that day. So powerful. So I hope you take some time to really think about this. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again. We are going to take a look at a couple minutes of a short film from the NAACP's website on the March on Washington. Freedom Now Movement, hear me. We are requesting all citizens to move into Washington, to go by plane, by car, bus, any way that you can get there. Walk if necessary. We are pushing for jobs, housing, desegregated schools. This is an urgent request. Please join. The American Broadcasting Company continues its coverage of the March on Washington. Possible to get a precise estimate of the crowd here, but it's certainly well over 25,000 now and swelling fast. congratulate all of you on the orderly, dignified manner in which you executed the march from the Washington Memorial. You have already told the world what we are here for and shown them by your courage, determination, and your order that we mean business. powerful that group and they were trying to estimate the crowd in the beginning miss sylvia they said twenty five thousand. it was over two hundred and fifty thousand people wow. were gathered there and did you notice the water fountains in yeah. that one clip together both races were using the water fountain so some things some changes had been made but many many changes still had to be made and when martin luther king jr got up to speak he wanted to talk about freedom and equality and injustice against any color of any race, not just white people, black people, but he spoke to everyone about having a dream. So we're going to watch a clip of his actual speech. I have the pleasure to present to you Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a 
great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Wow, such beautiful and powerful, powerful words. I get chills when I yeah. hear them. And if you notice, when Dr. King was speaking, he was on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Abraham Lincoln in Washington, D.C., and he is the president that spoke the Emancipation Proclamation, mm -hmm. which is why and it was a hundred years, Miss Ida. A hundred years, years after. Queen. And almost a hundred years, Abraham Lincoln was almost a hundred years from when Thomas Jefferson first wrote those words in the Declaration of Independence. So it's taken too long for Dr. Martin Luther's King dream to begin coming true. So, Ms. Sylvia and I want to really reflect on some of his words, and we hope you end up reading his whole speech. But, but, um, I get a lot of mine from this book. It's called I Have a Dream, and it's by Dr. Martin Luther King, but the paintings are done, and they have his speech in different paintings, but a lot of wonderful quotes from this book, and I'm going to read a couple of them and then just re take a moment to really reflect on them. One of the words is, I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And then I'm going to quote what he just did in his speech at the end. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Yep. Such powerful quotes. And I'm gonna share one also that I find to be very powerful from the speech. There's so many, but this one I like very much it says, say to you today, my friends, that even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. And so I just love how passionate Dr. King was and how he had so much hope for everyone in our country. And this dream should be deeply rooted in the hearts of American people, Miss Celia. Unfortunately, you know, um, Injustice still exists. Discrimination against people of different races still exists. So how can we keep Martin Luther King's dream alive? What are some things that happened after this day, uh, the March on Washington, and then what are some things that we can continue learning? Sure. Um, I'm going to show you another slide. Thanks for your patience. After the March on Washington, We have so much information for you. I know, Boys so many, girls. so many good things. Great. Here we go. So 
So after the March on Washington, there were three big things that happened with legislation, which means laws after the March on Washington. In 1964, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed, which bans racial discrimination in public places. So that stopped segregation in restaurants and playgrounds and things like that. In 1965, there was the Voting Rights Act that was passed, which outlawed discriminatory voting practices. And in 1968, the Civil Rights Act of 1968, which is also known as the Fair Housing Act, ended housing discrimination. So those are three big pieces of legislation that were passed after the March on Washington. And this photograph is of President Lyndon B. Johnson signing the Civil Rights Act of 1968. He actually signed all of these acts into law during um, this time period. So phenomenal. This thing was still going on. And we've learned so much putting this class together. I think Ms. Sylvia has some of those sites to show you. Right. So Ms. Heidi asked, what can we do? How can we keep Dr. King's stream alive? So these are some websites we're going to take a quick look at. Um, first thing is, if when we go to NAACP's website, which I'm going to show you, the virtual 2020 March on Washington is taking place August 27th and 28th, 2020, which is in a couple of days, which is great. So we will be able to, you can go on there to register to get information about the virtual March on Washington and see what civil rights things are taking place currently. Um, and then there's also websites here for the National Museum of African American History and Culture, the National Museum of American History, and the National Civil Rights Museum. Uh, and these all have great access to exhibits and collections of things that you can search to see about civil rights in our country. So I'm going to quickly show you. Here's the NAACP's website. Uh, and as soon as you get on there, it shows right away 2020 virtual March on Washington, August 27th through 28th. And down here at the bottom, you can click on sign up for alerts and it'll email you all the information you need about what's going on. And the other website that I'm going to just point out for right now is the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Uh, and we're lucky in Maryland, this is in Washington, D.C., so we're not too far away from it uh, to visit ourselves. But currently, it's closed down due to our COVID-19 situation. However, there are lots of things you can do if you choose to explore, search the collection, the exhibitions, and you can find so many different topics to learn more about the history of African Americans in our country. So I just wanted to be sure to show those two things to you as well. And that's that is have wonderful, Ms. Sylvia. So much information out there. We can only include very little bit for right. you today. But we want to end with some recipes, maybe, and some other quotes because it's up to you, really, to keep Dr. Martin Luther King's dream alive and how you treat the people around you. So this little recipe comes from this book, The Sit-In, and this is about when those college students sat down and did not get up uh, in that Woolworth little cafe um, because they were teaching people, but they had a recipe in there for integration. Number one, start with love. Number two, add conviction. Number three, season with hope. Number four, extra flav faith for flavor. Number five, mix black people with white people all over and other people too. Number six, let unity stand. Number seven, fold in some change that might need to happen. Number eight, sprinkle with dignity. Number nine, bake until golden and serve immediately and make enough for everyone. That's such a great recipe. That's a great way to have everyone working hard together for civil rights for all. And I just wanted to share a quote, a Dr. King quote that comes from this book, We Are the Change, um, words of inspiration from civil rights leaders with an introduction by Harry Belafonte. There's lots of amazing artwork in here with quotes from different civil rights leaders. 
There, of course, is one from Dr. King, and it's actually one of my favorite Dr. King quotes. It says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And great artwork to go along with it as well. And so we are the change. Lots of good things in here too. And Sylvia, you and I are the change. And boys and girls, you are the change. Keep Dr. Martin Luther King's dream alive. We hope that you take the time to really research and check out about the um, virtual March on Washington that's coming up August 28th. And just remember, I hope you have the same dream. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.